Welcome everyone to the, the Friday session of our DMP Online 10th year anniversary week. And uh, I will give you a quick introduction on um, today's topic, which is collaboration in the future of uh, data management plans. Um, on Monday, we started with a, a look back at uh, DMP Online and um, how the developments to get where we are at the moment. And plus we had some really interesting insights from uh, funder speakers that covered their work with data management plans and um, how the DMP Online can feed into that. Um, so if you haven't joined us on Monday, I would highly recommend that you go back and watch some of these recordings. My name is Patricia Hattelich. I'm the DMP Online product manager and as I said, I'll give a quick introduction uh, in, into um, our collaborations with various partners. DMP Online really um, works under the aspect that if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So collaboration um, to bring the the best possible product to the community has um, always been key to, to DMP Online. And uh, yeah, for those of you who saw Sarah Jones speak on uh, Monday, um, she also highlighted that our collaboration with the California Digital Library really was key to get where we are. So, by now, in DMP Online, we collaborate with over 60 institutions from uh, the California Digital Library that we work with to develop the code to um, our, our really large community of subscribers by now. And I hinted at uh, some new things on Monday and can now proudly announce that we've actually introduced um, a new partners page on our webpage to really showcase the wide range of institutions that we're working with um, and, and highlight um, that. And as you can see, there's a large variety from our code collaborators that you will hear from later in the sessions to our institutional subscribers, but also uh, national instances coming on board and um, our first funder that we uh, welcomed as a partner this year. And in addition to the uh, new partners page, we've also given the front page look of DMP Online um, a nice overhaul. Again, if you want to see how that fits with um, previous designs of uh, DMP Online, I highly recommend going back to Monday's recording and looking in a, into a bit of the history. Um, but yeah, the uh, front page of uh, the MP Online itself uh, now has a more, slightly more modern look. Um, for many of you, that's not really applicable because you may be working with uh, your own customized instances, but for any users coming from, to the MP Online um, Central, this is now what they will see. And so I said, I'll talk a bit about collaboration and our key collaborators uh, um, and the, the key product really is um, the DMP roadmap shared code base that we're developing jointly with the team of the California Digital Library. Um, and that is available openly on GitHub for, um, for others to reuse. And that is also where um, in, in the issues where we can where you can see um, which um, features we are planning to introduce and are working on and uh, if you have any new ideas for things that should be added that's also the place to do that so um, what's the relationship between DMP online and DMP roadmap so DMP online is basically using the um, sharedly developed DMP roadmap code um, and in addition to that has a so-called multi-tenant extension that um, allows us to offer 
um, the functionality of um, all the various brandings to um, our customers and some uh, additional features that we need to provide as part of, the, as of that that aren't necessarily part of the uh, DMP roadmap code. So uh, DMP online is basically the DMP roadmap code um, with some additional functionality and we're not always on the latest version of DMP roadmap as well because um, if we want to bring that over to DMP online we first need to make sure that uh, it doesn't break anything in the um, uh, functionality for our customers but overall um, we are developing new features usually sharedly on roadmap and then bringing them into DMP online for all of our customers. So how do we work with uh, the team at uh, the California Digital Library? Um, we check in with each other on a weekly basis. So we have weekly meetings for the whole team. And then uh, in addition to that, separate uh, meet, check in meetings for project managers and the development team. And in addition to that, uh, once a year, we try to come together and do uh, a more strategic planning of um, all our plans and for features for um, the period of a, of a whole year. And you can see that usually we try to do this in person. Sometimes we manage to have um, Benjamin, for example, joining us from uh, DMP Operator uh, to provide input as well. Um, so, yeah, this is really like one of the, the uh, more fun aspects um, is, is really the, the, this close collaboration to drive the um, product forward. In addition to the collaboration on the code, um, we're also active in various research data alliance uh, groups that touch on data management plans. Again, going back to um, uh, the, the motto that we really want to um, to develop aligned with the community and, and do things with the community to drive best practices and uh, not develop anything standalone that works for DMP online but doesn't work with anything else in the wider ecosystem. So the RDA groups we're involved in is the Active Data Management Plans Interest Group, um, the DMP Common Standards Working Group, um, the work of that group, um, Tomas will introduce in the session later on. And uh, some of our colleagues uh, are actively involved in the Exposing Data Management Plans Working Group that we've heard about in the, in the Monday session. So we're really like uh, on all the, the groups that uh, touch on data management plans, making sure we're represented and making sure that any outputs develop their feedback into the tool. And that's it from me on a quick introduction to collaboration um, before handing over to a wide range of our collaborators who have kindly agreed um, to talk a, to talk about that from their view from, from our uh, colleagues in Canada to um, the team at the CDL and uh, the French version of DMP Online. Um, I'm really excited that you will get an insight into all of these. And with that, I hand back to Magdalena to kick us off. Greetings and congratulations from Canada on the 10th anniversary of the DMP Online. My name is Jeff Moon and I am the director of the Portage Network, a national data stewardship initiative launched by the Canadian Association of Research Libraries or CARL in 2015 and now fully funded by Canada's new digital research infrastructure organization. My predecessor in the role of Portage director Chuck Humphrey had the vision to create a national community of practice built around the data life cycle. And we now have a network of over 160 experts from an array of stakeholder groups 
and over 70 organizations. The first expert group established was the DMP expert group, which I had the privilege of chairing. This group through Portage partnered with very talented library colleagues at the University of Alberta to extend access of their local instance of DCC's DMP online to all researchers in Canada. It is no exaggeration to say that the success of the DMP, this DMP initiative and its alignment with emerging funder requirements in Canada served as a springboard for future Portage successes. More recently, Portage has relied upon DCC support for the migration of the Canadian DMP assistant to the new DMP road roadmap code base. We are grateful for their help and expertise and want to congratulate DCC on reaching this milestone. Thank you. Um, to be able to leverage the excellent work that has been done and the partnership is between DCC and the University of California Curation Center. With this, I really want to express our appreciation and con congratulations to DCC to reach this important milestone. Our connection with DCC, as I mentioned earlier, started in 2014, with the University of Alberta first started to investigate the different options um, that is available to help us with the research data management planning for the institution. Um, in the summer of 2014, we launched the DMP Builder based on the code base of DMP Online version 4. It was our first project that was based on Ruby on Rails. So a few of us, um, Java de uh, developers and me, a librarian, scratched our head. <laughs> and, and with the help from DCC's developers, we were able to make, make the needed a customization and the implementation configurations to get the service off the ground in a few months. A few months later, uh, as mentioned by Jeff, uh, spearheaded by Chuck Humphrey, the research data management service coordinator at UFA at the time, uh, Carl or the Canadian Association of, of Research Libraries launched the Portage Network Initiative. So this national effort is really trying to uh, address that uh, gap uh, in national research data management infrastructure in Canada. So University of Alberta's DMP builder at the time was uh, identified to be expanded to a national platform and it was renamed as um, DMP assistant. Um, so this was the first RDM service offered by the Vertage uh, Network Initiative. To prepare for the launch of DMP assistant we have identified several critical enhancements, uh, including an umbrella portage network curation template. Uh, we wanted to have bilingual support for both the interface and the templates. Uh, we would like to have institutional level of customization and branding, among some other smaller features that make the tool more suitable for the Canadian RDM landscape. And as mentioned earlier, that any open development project is indeed a collective effort from the entire community. So the enhancement that we were able to make and develop were contributed back to the DCC code base. Um, some of those I know that was incorporated into DMP online version four, and I believe there may be some still small portions of that um, moved their way into the DMP roadmap, which we were um, quite proud of as our first Ruby on Rail kind of endeavor uh, and, and development. In 2017, I was invited to attend the machine actionable DMP planning session and IDCC that year at University of Edinburgh. It was a great pleasure to meet everyone at DCC in person, um, but it was great to sit in that uh, strategic planning session uh, at the development meeting, understand the future direction of the collaboration between the two organizations, DCC and uh, UC3 at the time, and be part of the discussion for the sustainable development plan for DMP uh, roadmap. In 2015, um, as uh, Jeff mentioned, DMP expert group was formed to provide guidance and develop that Canadian DMP strategies. Uh, the group have since developed all sorts of documentation to support the platform, 
we develop exemplar DevMPs to support the research community. There has been a few iterations over the years, but one thing that has been emerged um, for DMP assistant as a national service, because it's continued to grow, uh, we need or protection network need to build a better service model to be more responsive and proactive in addressing the community need. Um, as mentioned by Jeff, in 2019, Protage Network has received, first received the funding from Canary, uh, a, a non-for-profit organization provides national backbone network of Canada's national research and education network. With the funding, not only were we able to establish a service manager position for the DMPS services, Robin um, was actually just joined us not too long ago and I saw her on the call earlier. Um, so uh, she, uh, we, we now have a service manager position to manage a service to provide to uh, our Can uh, Canadian research communities. We were able to uh, connect with DCC and uh, have a contract with them um, to dedicate it. And also we have a dedicated full-time developer on our end to move forward with the DMP roadmap migration project. The majority of the work has already been completed. Thanks for the ama amazing team, particular Sam at DCC to help us move forward. We had just recently completed the beta testing of DMP Assistant 2.0 and plan to launch the service in mid-December. Um, knock on wood. <laughs> we have also just recently um, put out a call for community members, researchers, and other stakeholders like funding agencies uh, representative to join the DMP Assistant Advisory Committee. This is really exciting, a long overdue movement for many RDM uh, practitioners uh, in Canada. We really hope that this new platform, uh, the supporting documentation we're developing, training tutorials, exemplary DMPs, will all be in place before the release of the tri-agency uh, funding, uh, uh, tri-agency research data management policy to be released. So this was our first iteration of the DMP assistant, and this is our new um, DMP um, assistant point 2.0. It's probably familiar to many of you because we didn't do much uh, customization on the interface. We just carried on uh, with a great um, interface that has already been designed. So in terms of future roadmap, um, in 2020, Portage Network has received funding from NDOs, uh, as mentioned by Jeff, the new digital research infrastructure organization has just been established in 2019, is a Canadian organization um, to advance establishment of research focused, accountable, agile, strategic and sustainable digital research infrastructure ecosystem for Canadian researchers. Uh, the current funding cycles that we have uh, runs from October this year to March 2021. So during this phase, we will continue to complete the DMP Assistant 2.0 migration. We'll work on some high priority enhancements. Um, we wanted to sta stabilize the service model that we have just started to introduce to the community. And with the establishment of the new advisory committee, we wanted to identify future priorities. Uh, we anticipate that the tri-agency research data uh, management policy will be released this year. And um, we wanted to um, take advantage or really uh, uh, promote DMP assistant as uh, the two is a recommendation mentioned in this policy. Uh, we anticipate there will be a big influx of service requests coming to us in, in the next year after this uh, policy is released. With a new advisory committee, we hope to define the future strategic directions and enhancement for the DMP assistant as a platform and as a national service. Uh, some focus work uh, for the next phase is that we wanted to continue to develop a discipline specific exemplar uh, DMPs uh, with uh, engagement from disciplinary experts um, from the community. 
we also are aimed to have some indigenous researchers or researchers with some indigenous perspective on the advisory group to help us develop a more inclusive DMP practice uh, for Canadian um, uh, RDM um, activities. Um, and now we will be on DMP roadmap code base soon. We wanted to identify integration opportunities with research systems and tools to leverage the power of the machine actionable DMPs, a project that I have been talking about for a few years, and I think it's going to be finally enabled by this, is to have a Canadian RD, uh, DMP repository uh, so that we can harvest the DMP from um, DMP assistant and to allow better discovery of DMPs to support the Canadian research community. Um, Hopefully with the current phase of NDO funding, we hope we can provide a little bit more development power uh, at UFA. Um, we're hoping that we can collaborate with DD DCC to, uh, and the, the community decide um, some, some features that could benefit both uh, us and the community and to further our uh, collective RDM goals. Again, uh, I want to thank you all for inviting me and give me this opportunity to congratulate you and for the 10 years of amazing achievement that RDC has done for the global um, RDM landscape. And I'm looking forward to the next decade of the collaboration and more great achievement from you and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Weiwei. And thank you for a wonderful presentation. Um, and sharing the video, glad it all worked. We also received a question. I think we can just pick up the questions um, straight after because it doesn't make a big difference whether we answer them at the beginning or at the start. Uh, Madeline asked whether you also review plans. Right now, we're, this is part of the service model that we're trying to uh, develop. I think because of the DMP expert group in the past uh, didn't have the capacity, so we didn't have that incorporated in the workflow. But right now, I think part of the service model is to build local um, expertise in each institution that we support, so that we'll be able to build some of those in part of that workflow. But currently, we're not doing that. Um, as part of our um, our service, and and I'm I'm hoping that Robert Robin is taking notes that it may be something that we could look into as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Weiwei. Um, I don't know whether there are any more questions, or we could just um, move on to our next speaker, who is Tomas Miksha from Machine Actionable DMP. So. Tomasz, um, hopefully you're, yes, you're able to share your screen. So um, I let you to speak now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about machine actionable DMPs. And I've seen at the beginning of the session that there are quite some expectations. Unfortunately, we have only 10 minutes today, so I won't be able to go into the details. And I think we are here today to celebrate. That's why my presentation today will focus on uh, how it all started and what are the things we can do together. So I'm also going to talk about the future. I want to provide you some examples and then there will be links that you can later check for details if you want to learn uh, more about it. So let's start with the uh going back in time going back in time to 2017 and to put in the right mindset in 2017 uh donald trump was sworn as the president of the united states and also great britain triggered article 50. Uh, but apart from that uh, developments we also had some good developments and this is when the story of madmp start and there was a workshop in Edinburgh organized by uh, Sarah Jones and, and Stephanie Sims. And there we talked a lot about DMPs. We had around 50 people from different countries discussing what are the use cases for uh, active DMPs at that time, as we call them. And this led to discussions at the LDE plenaries, the 10th in Barcelona, which basically people said, okay, let's do something together about it. And then in Montreal, uh, in the October or November, as far as I remember, 
we launched the DMP Common Standards uh, Working Group to do the work. And back in 2017, uh, we were mostly uh, showing this slide to people. And I know that many of you might have seen this slide several times, but it's a very important one for us because uh, we defined what machine actionable DMPs should be. So we wanted them to be living documents. The goal was to automate the data management by allowing uh, a way for different stakeholders to, to communicate efficiently and to provide uh, a possibility for systems uh, to act on, be, on their uh, behalf. And of course, we always wanted to have the funders in scope. Uh, so there was a need to facilitate validation of DMPs. And we said at that time that we need three things to make it happen. We need to have well-defined LDM workflows. So basically we need to know who is responsible for what and, and in what way can the uh, stakeholders interact. We wanted the infrastructure to support them. So tools like DMP online, but, but also uh, other types of tools. And we also needed a common way to represent information. And this was the focus of the working group that uh, was working on machine actionable data management plans. So let's go back to 2020. And now I should uh, put the context of on, on development in 2020, but maybe it makes no sense to talk about what's happening in 2020. So uh, let's talk about something nice uh, instead. And the nice thing in 2020 is that our uh, recommendation has been issued by RDA. So there is now an official recommendation on machine actionable data management plans. The specification itself uh, consists uh, of a set of fields which are mostly optional and uh, it can be customized to serve specific settings, specific business needs, or sometimes you can translate business needs as funder needs. And this is not a questionnaire and not a, temp not a template, something we always keep on uh, reminding. This is just a way to efficiently break down information uh, contained in traditional DMPs and to enable exchange of, of information between, between different systems. Uh, DMP Online and the whole family of uh, products based on DMP roadmap, such as DMP Tool, DMP Opidor, are currently adopting the recommendation. Uh, I know that maybe coming to a party and mentioning also the other uh, tools is maybe not nice, but others are also implementing it. And I think that was the spirit of why uh, the DCC decided to, to help in establishing the group. So that it's not only a recommendation for DMP online, but for the uh, whole community. So now in 2020, uh, out of these three things we had to implement, we have implemented, uh, we have done the, we have the common standard to represent the information. And the future should focus on the others to two points. We need to keep on developing the workflows and developing the infrastructure. And I'm going to focus a bit on the infrastructure and how we can actually apply this common standard to, to build automations and to uh, create new opportunities. So one of the things that is still open and I think uh, something is required from the community is mapping to funder templates. So we have a set of fields in MADMPs, and now we just need to select which of them we need to uh, transmit to the funder so that it's compliant uh, with the requirements. Uh, we should provide a common guidance and simply say, okay, these 10 fields are needed when we talk to Science Europe, and these 20 fields are needed when we talk to NSF. While developing the guidance, while, while developing the, the standard, we analyze the template. So it's not like something is missing, it's just about having a consistent way of using the, uh, the standard. There are some examples, there are some prototypes. Uh, this is something we, we can later check uh, and we can uh, start a discussion at RDA about that. Uh, another way to continue work with MADMPs is to automate exchange of linking of information. So we would like other objects, for example, research uh, data packaging um, uh, concepts or, or knowledge graphs to refer to MADMPs, either by pointing to a DMP or by reusing some information from the DMP or providing the information to the DMP. And here we have uh, links to some examples. So there is one nice presentation from our colleagues on integration with open and knowledge graph. There is also a presentation on uh, integration with research object crates for data packaging. 
Uh, MADMPs also have a serialization as an ontology tool, uh, address the needs of the semantic web and, and linked open data. And there are also some, uh, there's also some work going on integration with data repositories such as Invenio or Dataverse. So if you click on the links, you will uh, later be able to check out the details. Um, another way of using MADMPs is to eventually build systems that allow us to expose parts of MADMP. So here you can see in the screenshot an example of a prototype built by the students of Teuvin that allow you to search and filter relevant information from within the DMP. So for example, you can say, I want to have uh, MADMPs which were submitted to the specific funder. Are you reusing a specific data set which is located in repository ABC? And then you will get all uh, MADMPs that fulfill this criteria. Currently, this is not really possible with the traditional DMPs because you would have to make a full text search. Of course, it's possible to also restrict access to specific fields and and um, and not show everything what you would what you wouldn't like to to show. But this is just a concept. You would need a product that actually provides this uh, functionality. Uh, you cannot forget that MADMPs is something that uh, also has to be deployed locally. So. The whole power of DMPs is when you start deploying them in your local infrastructure, when you use them as a glue to integrate your systems to exchange information uh, between them. So there's a lot of work we can do as a community, but to really feel the benefits, you have to make it fit into your own institutional context. There are also cases uh, which are beyond standard cases. Uh, during the last plenary we had at the plenary we had a presentation made by Claire Austin who is thinking of using MADMPs in the governmental context so uh, I can I would like to point you to to contact Claire if you think that uh, such a use case uh, is applicable maybe also in your case or you would like to work together with her on that uh, so to sum up what's next uh, come to the active DMPs interest group which acts as the umbrella for all things related to active DMPs, machine actionable DMPs, and in general DMPs. Bring your novel ideas. This is a place for discussion on all, um, all these deployments and activities I have just described um, uh, related to MA DMPs. The DMP Common Standards Working Group will just continue to maintain the recommendation. So we will make updates to specification if needed and support the adoption. But if you have any novel use cases, please bring it to the uh, open group or to the open group, which is the active DMPs interest group. Uh, so if you have any contacts, questions, ideas, success stories, please, please feel free to contact chairs from any of the working or interest uh, groups. If you want to read more about things we did, here is a, a list of, of publications we have written in the last three years. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for the invitation again. And all the best to DMP online. Thank you so much, Tomasz. Uh, we wouldn't be as far as we are um, if it wasn't also for you and for the wonderful collaboration we have thanks to you. So thank you again uh, for being our speaker today. And I think um, Unless there are some questions, which we're always more than happy to pick up on, or if you can't think of any and just think of them later, we can always pick up some questions towards the end of the session. We can move to our next colleague, Maria, uh, from the MP2. Um, we'll be talking about building the new network DMP with the DMP roadmap. So Maria, I hope you will be able to share the screen and this is my first one. Uh, well, thanks everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Pretzelis and I'm gonna talk a little bit about our work um, partnering with DMP online about machine actionable DMPs and how we're using uh, machine actionable DMPs to network uh, research activities using identifiers and DMPs together. Um, so I am with the California Digital Library um, on the UC3 department. Um, so CDL is part of the University of California system. We work with all of the um, University of California campuses, but we also do a lot of work internationally with partners like DCC. So UC3 works in a few different areas. 
Uh, we do a lot of work in research data management, like the DMP tool. Um, we also do uh, work in data publication and data metrics with um, Dryad um, and make data count. We do a lot with persistent identifiers, digital preservation, and also data and software skills um, training uh, in the form of library carpentry. So DMP tool um, kind of fall, uh, fell under a similar trajectory as DMP online um, in terms of our history, um, which so I really found um, Kevin's overview of the history of DMP online super interesting uh, from Monday. Um, so we are going to be having our 10 year anniversary next year. Um, and DMP tool really uh, came about because of community interest in the project um, and because of a community need to support researchers who were being faced with having to create data management plans. Um, so partnering with the DMP online people is really sincerely one of my favorite parts so I was just saying that partnering with DMP online is really wonderful and Magdalene just gave a perfect example. Um, we really do do very close collaboration with um, feature development um, done in parallel and it's just been a, a real pleasure to, to work with that team. Um, and like Sarah was saying, um, you know, it really allows us to do a lot more innovative work than we would be able to do solo. So it's a great partnership. Um, one of our uh, sort of focuses has been on creating next generation machine actionable data management plans. Um, and we do have an active NSF eager grant right now through uh, CDL that is allowing us to build some of these uh, new features. Um, I believe if you could go to the next slide. So I'm gonna get into how we're using the machine actionable DMPs and PIDs to connect and uh, research activities through um, networking these connections. So next slide, please. So just to back up, um, NSF has really been an important figure in the development of the DMP tool from the very beginning. Um, and they've also been lately really important in sort of pushing the community to adopt some important um, practices for managing research data they came out with a Dear Colleague letter in May of 2019 um, that encouraged researchers to adopt two very big important practices in our world, um, the use of persistent identifiers for data and the use of machine readable data management plans. So this was a big um, release for us and um, you can go to the next slide. Um, as part of that letter, we got uh, an additional grant from NSF to convene um, about 40 stakeholders, experts in the field of RDM from all sorts of different areas like um, libraries, IT, funders, researchers themselves, tool builders, came together and talked about these recommendations from NSF and talked about how could the different stakeholders um, adopt these within their institutions. So we just came out with a report. It's very short. I think it's about 10 pages. It's very action oriented, uh, really focusing on the specific stakeholder and what they can do to um, incorporate identifiers and machine actionable DMPs into their work and into their community. So I encourage you to take a look at it. It really kind of summarizes a lot of our thoughts around this very succinctly. Um, yep, next slide, please. So we're doing a lot of work around, obviously around identifiers. And the reason we think identifiers are really key in this is that the, the use of identifiers within DMPs and the use of an identifier for DMPs allow us to create a link between the data management plan and all of the project outputs. And importantly, it allows us to use the existing infrastructure of identifiers and data sites so that we're able to facilitate these connections within the PID graph. We don't have to build a new system or build a new infrastructure. We're hooking into this existing infrastructure by using openly available, openly licensed identifiers. We go to the next slide. So Datasite is a sub-award with us on that eager grant that I mentioned. And we're working with them on a few um, specific things. 
Uh, first off, they are updating their metadata schema to provide support for data management plans, which may be called output management plans. We're still working on the terminology. So that's big um, in terms of our ability to really effectively have identifiers uh, for data management plans. We're also working with them to really demonstrate the connections that we can make visually um, between DMPs and project output. So we've put, we're building some really cool Jupyter notebooks so people can go in, play with DMPs that have identifiers and actually see visually what connections are made possible between the original DMP and the project output. So we are going to talk a lot more about that project, give people insight into best practices for metadata corresponding to a DMP ID. We're going to show people how to use those Jupyter notebooks in January 2021, possibly at Pitapalooza. Um, go, go to the next slide. And uh, just this, thank you. Uh, this is just one of those visualizations, kind of a sneak peek. Um, in the middle there is, this is looking at the specific DMP. So you can see all of the people corresponding to that DMP. These are connected through ORCID identifiers. You can see the organizations using ROARS. Funders are using the, fund re the funder registry ID through Crossref. And then the important part here is the, well, it's all important, but the notable part here is the data sets and publications. So these are the eventual outputs that came out of this specific project. So you can see all of the data sets and publications associated with this data management plan. And all of these are linked using existing identifiers and related identifiers um, for the project. You can go to the next slide. So in order to kind of create and build on this ecosystem, we had to really focus on creating the ability to network DMPs and to add new features. And this is all done uh, in collaboration with uh, DMP Online and the DMP Roadmap code base. So we have added as uh, the core identifiers to make this possible. We built a new API that builds on that RDA common standard that Tomas just talked about. So that common standard was really, truly fundamental to almost everything that we've done. So we are deeply indebted to the community work that went into uh, putting that schema together. So you can export plans as RDA compliant JSON through the API, or you can do it on an individual basis uh, within the, the tool. You can just, you know, where you download to a PDF, um, you will be able to just download to JSON if you want to do so. I think most people will use the API, but if you just want to take a look quickly, you can also do it that way. You can go to the next slide. So next up, I know a lot of people are interested in kind of where we are with network DMPs, what things are coming. Uh, so we are really focused right now. Um, our developer on the DMP tool side, Brian Riley, is putting a lot of time currently into developing uh, more granular support for um, data set or, or output description. So right now, we know in a DMP, you're usually just doing a narrative description of uh, your data set. Um, and so what we've done is we are breaking that out into specific controlled vocabularies. Um, say for the type of license and using identifiers for the repository that the researcher is going to deposit those data sets in so that we're able to better track outputs by having better, uh, more um, interoperable data describing them from the beginning. So we're working on that right now. Um, as part of that, we'll be adding additional um, identifiers. Um, and importantly, we're adding additional hooks into the existing PIV ecosystem so we can track those outputs. So some uh, places that we need to work with are data repositories, publishers, and field stations. Which brings me to my last um, bit, we're talking about field stations. Um, we are working on several kind of real life projects that allow us to kind of test out some of the things that we're trying to build with um, machine actionable DMPs. So our Fair Island project is partnering with field stations, so very controlled environments um, where researchers um, have to work under what we are developing and intend to be optimal data policies 
and we need to use machine actionable data management plans. So in this environment, we're able to really test out and prove out some of the things that we've all been working towards and building in an actual real life um, environment. If you go to the next slide. So our goals uh, for this project are, as I said, to test the effectiveness of these um, ideal um, open science policies, to demonstrate the capabilities of the machine actionable data management plan, test out our APIs, test out our configurations, find gaps that you know we didn't know existed, um, you know, really have a real life environment in order to see how all of these pieces um, come together and work. And to see what happens kind of downstream when you're working in this idealized environment. So our key areas of work with your island are to have um, fair compliant data policies, to continue working on those machine actionable DMPs. We're integrating with external systems. So that's a great way to really test out our API, test out that common standard in an actual you know, working way, um, and to eventually expand the Fair Island model. Our partner with this project is the University of California Natural Reserve System. They manage all of the field stations run by the University of California. So that includes, I think it's like 60 or 70 field stations, a lot of field stations, primarily in California, but they have some internationally as well. So the scope of this is quite large. We recently hired um, a product manager for this role, Erin um, Robinson. She was the former executive director of ESIP. She's very knowledgeable, very experienced in this, and we are just thrilled to have her join us and kind of push this project forward. So I think that we'll have a lot more to share with you all, um, I think, in the coming year. Next slide, please. So our partners in this, as I mentioned, the UC Natural Reserve System, we're working with the Tetraroa Society. So the first kind of primary field station we're working on with um, on this is the Tetraroa uh, field station. It is a beautiful island in French Polynesia. Um, it's an atoll um, and uh, really just a very controlled, optimal uh, environment um, to test out some of this work. Of course, building on all the work that's done through RDA um, and all of this is um, going into roadmap and um, will be shared with the community. Next slide, please. So if you're interested in you know, following our work on machine actionable DMPs or networks DMPs, um, I blog about it on the DMP tool blog um, where I always um, post if we have a new big release. Um, I'd also, again, encourage you all to take a look at that report. When I'm done, I will put it in the chat um, and we'll share the slides so you can have a look at other things as well. And I think that was it. Yes. Thank you, Magdalena, for driving of this. Thank you again very much, Maria, and thank you for the talk. Um, I think we can just move to our next speaker, uh, who is Benjamin from Opidor. Um, so Benjamin, I hope again you'll be able to share the screen if you have any slides. I think it's okay for you. Brilliant. Wonderful. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm uh, Benjamin Fort. I'm the lead developer of uh, DMP Opido, which is the French uh, instance of uh, DMP roadmap. So today we talk to you about the past, present and future of uh, DMP Opido. Um, so first, of, a bit of history. So DMP Opido was launched in uh, 2016 in November, and it was uh, at, at the time an instance of uh, DMP Online uh, v4. And uh, when the DMP roadmap code base uh, was launched, uh, we migrated to uh, the v1 uh, in uh, June uh, 2018. And we are currently based on the DMP roadmap uh, 2.1.7 version. Uh, that's the version that's, that is running on our live server. Um, we, we have made some contribution to the DMP roadmap uh, code base. Uh, first of all, the notification system. So when you see uh, a little message saying that there will be a maintenance of something, uh, please think about us. Uh, the second, um, the second uh, contribution we made uh, was the the one-click uh, plan creation. 
uh, which you can see on the uh, templates page. Um, uh, you can create uh, on this page. You can see all the templates uh, available uh, in the in the MP online or the MP uh, the MP roadmap. I think on uh, on their version, it's uh, only the Fundos templates. And uh, when you click on the plus button, you can uh, directly create a new uh, a new plan uh, based on uh, on this uh, template. And uh, we I think we we have uh, corrected corrected some. Uh, other bugs, and uh, I uh, I submitted some issues to the to the roadmap uh, team. Uh, uh, over the over the time, uh, our community uh, has grown, and uh, we have we had a lot of feedback uh, about uh, functionalities and feature, uh, features that uh, the community wanted to, uh, integrated uh, in our instance. Um, one of these feature was uh, the plan creation that we um, we uh, overhauled. Uh, we we changed the, we completely changed the, the way we you could uh, you can create uh, your plan. So when uh, you go on the create plan uh, page, you can see all the all the other templates uh, available um, for your organization. So as you can see in, in this slide, uh, my organization doesn't have a, a, new, a template available. So there's a message for that. Uh, you can see uh, at the top, uh, we have um, an indication of what the default template is. And if you want to use uh, this uh, default template, you have a button to, to create a plan based on this, on this template. Uh, if you go into uh, on the next uh, tab, uh, you can uh, use the template of another organization. For example, uh, here it's uh, the Inrai. And if if this organization have multiple templates, you can choose uh, in the in the list uh, a template in one uh, in the list. And the last uh, the last tab is uh, for the Funder templates. So it's just pretty much the same thing. You can. Uh, you can search for a founder and uh, choose one of the templates. Uh, we've uh, added uh, the research output support, uh, which is uh, one of the main feedback we had uh, over the years. So when you create a new plan, you have a default template, a default research output that is uh, created uh, for your plan. And if you want, you can create uh, you can create a new um, new uh, research output. So uh, you can create as much as you want. We have we had some uh, some people creating uh, thirty uh, research output. Uh, you can uh, you can choose an abbreviated name that which is used uh, in the interface and the full name that is a, a more descriptive name of the of your research output. And uh, you can choose a type uh, indicating uh, what uh, what your data are about. And uh, the, this uh, this list of uh, types is based on the um, on the data site uh, uh, schema. I think it's a uh, resource uh, type uh, in the data site uh, schema. Uh, so when you have created your research output. Uh, you can uh, you can see that there's uh, tabs that are created in your uh, in your right plan uh, um, tab in uh, in your uh, sorry in your uh, in your DMP and uh, you can uh, you can feel uh, you can answer the questions for each research output and if you want you can uh, add uh, some comments uh, for uh, a given uh, answer. And uh, finally, we've added some uh, download settings for your exports. So you can uh, you can export uh, one of, uh, if you want, you can export just your first uh, research output. And uh, there's, a, there's a mode that, uh, an export mode that you can choose. So it will reformat your, your export uh, uh, based on uh, what you choose. Uh, we have uh, other smaller features. Uh, as I said, uh, our available template list is uh, displaying all the available templates 
in uh, in our in the MPOP door, and uh, that's the one-click plan creation. Uh, we have some features for user cleaning. Uh, with uh, we have the an ins, an ins, um, we have an, an organization in France that uh, impose uh, you to uh, to delete uh, personal data in uh, in in website if uh, if the users uh, ask for it. So we we anonymize, I guess. I, uh, we anonymize the user uh, account uh, if uh, this user doesn't uh, connect after uh, five years, and uh, we just we and we delete uh, the users that haven't accepted uh, an invitation. For example, if you uh, add a user to your plan and it doesn't create an account, so it will be uh, deleted from a database. Uh, we have an org deactivation uh, features. Uh, that's more for the for us, because we had a lot of uh, of organization uh, fusing together. For example, uh, uh, we had uh, universities uh, on Paris and uh, other and other um, and other places uh, that uh, fuse uh, fuse together. So we uh, we wanted to. Uh, to be able to uh, to deactivate uh, the the organism the organizations, and we've added some uh, information on the our feedback pl feedback plans. Uh, so it was uh, we added a requester and the request date uh, that is displayed for the the administrator. So we are currently working on uh, machine actionable uh, DMP features. Uh, our approach about uh, machine actionable uh, DMP is that we want uh, to have a, the, con the content of uh, the DMP to we want it to be more structured structured. So we uh, we made a new data model. So I will change uh, the window. Do you see the the zoomed in the picture? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is your data model. It's uh, I think it's based on the uh, RDA uh, common standard model, but it it, it has uh, more information in it. And uh, here you can see you can see uh, how the data uh, are, is structured in our database. So uh, you you have a, a DMP container that, which contains the metadata about the DMP and uh, the metadata about the project. And you, are, you have here another container which contains all the, the information about uh, the research outputs. And the main information about uh, the DMP is, is, uh, is here. So you can see there's uh, the research output description, uh, information about uh, data reuse or personal data issues. Uh, you have uh, information about legal issues or data storage, and uh, you can uh, see there's information about the budget. Sorry, the budget. And at the bottom uh, right, uh, you have uh, a specific data, uh, which is uh, more specific information for institution that have a, a type of information that are not uh, supported for in our uh, instance in our data model, sorry. So based on this model, we, we've made some, uh, some uh, development. Uh, this model is described in, uh, in, uh, J in uh, JSON. And uh, this uh, JSON schema is used to generate uh, forms in uh, DMP OPDOR. So on the left, you can see that uh, we have uh, here it's pro it's uh, the schema about uh, data reuse. So you have uh, some information. The first one is uh, the justification of your data reuse, which is uh, uh, a string, and uh, you can see there's uh, information about uh, about uh, the label which is displayed in the form and the type of inputs. So you can see it's a text area. So there's a text area displayed in our form. And uh, the second property is about uh, reuse data. So here you can describe uh, precisely how the data, which data are reused. And um, you can see there's, there's a list 
uh, there's a tab a table that it's create that is created uh, in our form. Um, you can create multiple uh, multiple data uh, re reuse research output. And uh, when uh, when you click on the create button or the modify button, you can yeah. There's a, a model uh, window that uh, that uh, opens, and you can uh, type your information about uh, your the linked information to the to the reuse data. So uh, if I think it's it's here. So you see there's uh, your data reuse that is here. And uh, I think it's maybe missing. Uh, there should be um, uh, a box about uh, disc describing the, the reuse data. So when you save your form, uh, all the data from the form and uh, the model window are saved in, as a, a JSON form. Uh, as a JSON in our database. So on the, uh, on the right side, you can see that how the data is, uh, is saved in uh, the database. Um, each part of Im information is uh, stored separately. So if, if you want just to pull the reuse data from the database, you can uh, just, you can just uh, extract uh, this information, but uh, for the sake of uh, the demonstration and just put your full, the full information for the reuse data. Uh, our plan is to develop uh, more APIs uh, for extracting uh, all this new information. So you can uh, you could extract, uh, for example, you, the full DMP uh, if you want uh, all the information of about uh, in your DMP. You can uh, extract uh, extract it. But if you want uh, just uh, the information about uh, one research output, uh, you could extract it uh, from uh, from your DMP. <coughs> Oops. Uh, if you want, you can extract uh, just one property. Uh, for example, if you want uh, just your uh, the justification, uh, it's possible. And uh, if you want, you can uh, to filter the the content of the DMP. So by filtering, uh, I mean that, uh, for example, um, we want uh, one of the latest version of uh, DMP roadmap was uh, adding um, uh, uh, API clients. Yes, it's what it's called. Uh, when uh, you are the super admin of uh, a roadmap, a DMP roadmap instance, uh, you can create a new uh, you can declare API client, uh, which can uh, which can use the API and uh, extract information uh, in the DMP, and uh, we can we could uh, use uh, this feature combined uh, with uh, with uh, our new API to uh, allow uh, to filter which kind of information uh, one API client can use uh, can access. Sorry, so for example. Um, a storage facility could access only the information about uh, uh, about storage, or a founder can, could access uh, information about uh, the project and uh, maybe uh, the budget of your DMP. So you can uh, you can use um, you can use uh, you can declare uh, filters uh, in uh, the in the application, and uh, these filters could be used to. Uh, to pull, uh, to pull uh, some kind of information, uh, uh, which uh, some kind of information, depending on the the client uh, using the the API. Sorry, uh, that's all for me. Uh, I want to thank uh, you for listening to me, and to, I want to thank. Uh, the DCC and uh, CDL uh, team uh, for maintaining the roadmap code and uh, doing uh, all these wonderful uh, new features and uh, and the latest one, uh, which is the Rails, uh, Rails 5 migration, which is, uh, I think it was a, a big, uh, a big uh, development. So thank you, everyone. And uh, I think there's, there is some uh,
Maybe there is some question in the chat. I don't think we were having questions, but thank you, Benjamin, so much. And again, we are we are so happy uh, for your inputs and collaboration. It was so wonderful last year when you could come to Edinburgh. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be the case this year. Uh, no. But um, thank you again. Um, what a wonderful presentation and um, what a great collaboration. Unless we have some questions coming in, I thought um, we could just end today um, with a short quiz, which if you listen to our presentations today, hopefully it won't be too difficult. Um, I have been referred as meme on Twitter with my questions from Monday. So I hope I'm not as meme um, today. So it's for the due. Um, let me share my screen again. And again, I will I'll kindly ask you all to go to menti.com and I hope you can see the code as well. It's currently covered on my screen, but Patricia, can you see the code? People should. Yes, use. and I can pop that in the chat as well. Thank you. I hope, yeah, I can see a few hearts coming. So it's menti.com. And Patricia shared the code with you. Um, it's very short. I think it's just uh, six questions to go through uh, based on what we spoke today about. And I think each question has around 15 or 25 seconds, depending on the type of question it is. And unfortunately, um, you are only able to take one question, but sometimes there might be questions where more of the answers are correct. So. Um, if you, if you just click one correct answer, um, that will be good enough. We do have also extended version of the quiz. Um, so we can share a link with you later in a, in a case you want to uh, guess what's our branding color in the hex format and other fun uh, that was mentioned on Monday. So we currently have 10 participants. Feel free, no pressure to join, but I think with 10, we can, we can, we can just start. So. Let me move on. Um, brilliant. What I did this time, uh, Patricia, you also mentioned there weren't any leaderboards after each question. So this time around, I did the leaderboards after every question so you can see how well you're doing. And also the faster you answer, the more points you get. So first question, what does the MP roadmap stand for? 25 seconds answer. Sorry, my doggy fell asleep as well, and she's breathing very heavily at the moment. So you may hear some snoring at the background. Okay, five more seconds. Please do. <laughs> I do apologize. Um, okay, we can see the answers here. And Let's see. Oh, Maria, followed by Sarah. Well done, Patricia, too. Um, so, yeah, uh, DMP roadmap stands for the collaboration between uh, DCC and EC3 team. And we have officially formalized our partnership in 2018. Um, and there are slight differences. Uh, sometimes our colleagues uh, might be able to um, make certain features life much faster than we are uh, due to our um, further testing required due to our clients, but more or less we are sharing the code base together and um, we are very, very grateful to be working together. So next question. Again, the faster you answer. Um, where are local installation of our open source code? So again, 25 seconds to answer. We didn't really cover this today, um, but we were- we Kind doing, of did. Yeah, kind of. Um, so five more seconds and let's see. Time's up. Yeah, there we are. So all the answers this time around were correct. And let's see who was the fastest one to answer. 
Oh, Mary, I think Marianne said there is uh, some real competition going on uh, between two of you. Um, so, yeah, our open source code uh, is installed in all of these countries. And um, again, we are very happy for all of these collaborations because um, sometimes, you know, uh, like Benjamin presented, we might be able to do uh, further work, uh, which is benefiting to all. And if you are using our local installation, do get in touch so we can promote all the work and we are all doing together. So next question. And we're halfway through. What does it mean to be machine actionable? Well, I mean, machine actionable DMP really. Um, just a few more seconds for this one um, because there is more to read. Almost all the answers are correct, except the last one. Um, and let's see, what did you do? Maria and Sarah. Well, <laughs> Patricia was fastest this time around though. Um, Sarah is cheating. She has a better internet connection than we do. She said Jean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm actually I sh I should be losing because I'm preparing food while I'm doing this. <laughs> well, I'm not for multitasking there. I don't believe. <laughs> I'll put You're on just my camera. catching up like from the embarrassment on Monday. Here you go. <laughs> I'm making some little cocktail sticks. <laughs> Sarah didn't make it to our first fifteen, like I heard. So I think Sarah is trying really hard today, pretending she's making dinner at the same time. Um, yeah, um, machine actionable um, is really one of very often mentioned words and we are machine actionable. We currently have the full text API but with our colleagues um, from Maria, you could already see there is further work um, which are working on such as the ROR, for example, extensions and, and we'll, we'll be working to be more action actionable um, in the following year. So next question, We're almost there. So select countries in which DMP Online has subscribers and collaborators. It's very similar to my previous questions. I do apologize. I didn't realize this. Um, and again, we have a countdown there. This was me trying to cut the quiz from Monday and, and put a few questions here. Very similar um, to previous question but again all the questions were correct and let's see who was the fastest wow okay donald trump was the fastest one this time around well done donald trump <laughs> um yeah and um, we, there is a difference between the collaborators and the subscribers because you know DMP Online is running a service. So uh, we, we have subscribers in Finland and Netherlands and Austria and Sweden, and most recently in Ireland and Switzerland, but we do collaborate also with US and with Belgium and France and all of the other countries that were previously mentioned. Um, I believe this is the last question uh, for today. So. Where can you find out more about our latest DNP online news? Um, Dokey. Let's see. Who was the fastest? Montana. Well done. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, if you're not following us on Twitter, do so. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter, find what works really the best for you. Um, it's a nice way to keep um, up with our most recent news and uh, with all the work we do also with our collaborators. So it's a good place uh, to look at. 
that. Let's find out who is the winner of today. And well done, Maria. Very impressive. Fantastic. I wish I could tell you um, you have a prize. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Um, we're thinking about a unicorn nest to be a prize for a participant, so that might be a thing. But brilliant. I, I would like to just thanks to all the speakers um, and thank you all for taking part in this whole week of celebrations. Um, we didn't really get as far as we got without you. Um, like I mentioned before, if you haven't watched the session from Monday, I highly recommend because it's nice information about how the DMP online really started. Um, and it's really thanks to those previous 10 years that we got this far and we have this wonderful community of RDA different groups and working with Opider and um, our partners in DMP tool. So it's great to see how far we got in those 10 years. And thank you all again for joining today. Unless we have some further questions today, I think we can nicely wrap up here. This is Sherry Lake. I want to congratulate the DMP online. <laughs> thank you so much, Cheryl. And thank you for taking part to celebrate with us very much. It's so wonderful to see you all. Um, such a wonderful community here today. Yeah, well done to you all. It's great to see it 10 years on and getting stronger and stronger. It's nice today seeing all the international collaboration, all the other people using the code base and and actually, well, I think Maria said it really well, just how nice it is to be able to collaborate like that. Well, thank you, Sarah. I remember when we first spoke that we will uh, do a 10 year anniversary celebration together when you all still were still with us. So we got here. Um, and again, it's just wonderful to, to work with you all and um, the discussions we are able to have, thanks to all of you, are wonderful um, because, you know, there are certain things that are very UK specific, but being truly part of this truly international community um, help us to make sure that the DMPs are just really well informed and, and we, can, we can make them to work for all. Um, Okay, so I don't know whether it's people <laughs> thinking. So I would like to thanks to all the speakers again. Thanks a billion. And thanks to all the attendees today. Um, massive thanks to Patricia and Diana for today. I'm very happy and we were in Zoom bomb today. And hopefully we didn't have as many technical difficulties as on Monday. Um, but have a lovely evening. I hope you have a lovely dinner. Um, Sarah, you will have to share a picture with us on Twitter. I'll um, send you a picture now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and have nice a to see you all thank you very much thank have you everyone bye-bye bye-bye cheers bye-bye